Hello everybody and welcome back to I Was a Teenage Exocolonist. Last time we got some more fun times in the secret club. We also got to pick Mars as our Valentine's and now we have another year with her. And I, if I remember correctly, we don't have to save any lives this year. So we may actually able, be able to spend some time with her and search for Sim. Because I still need to do that. But I'll do most of that off camera. First, let's start with talking to Mars. Oh, it's Uticot. <laughs> And furthermore, your attitude towards your elders in general is entirely disrespectful. You find Uticot delivering a scathing reprimand to Mars, who is doing her best to look like she'd rather be anywhere else. You speak out of turn, you question the council's decisions. If you would disagree with an order, you simply do not do it. I could go on. Do you need me to go on? Mars scowls. No, she replies. Uticot clicks her tongue. Honestly, I have thought better of you, Marzipan, she chastises. You have the sort of natural leadership ability I remember from when I was a girl many years ago. Mars doesn't roll her eyes, but you get the sense it's a close call. You need to set a better example for the other children, Uticot continues. It's okay to have your own opinions, but you can't let you kids can't just do whatever you want. You have to follow the rules and respect your elders. I am setting a good example, Mars retorts, stomping her foot. Hello! The only reason we're here is because a bunch of people knew living on Earth was nonsense and decided to do something different. Uticot looks scandalized, but Mars just continues on. Maybe kids should have more authority. We're the ones with the new ideas that will take us into the future. Mars is right! See, Mars insists, everyone agrees with me. You might be on Vertumna, but your old, ancient brain is still stuck back on Earth. She takes a deep breath, and for a moment seems much older. Governor Uticott, we need higher walls and more aggressive farmland clearing, and we need it now. Are we here to stay on this planet, or will we just sit around until the jungle swallows us back up? Uticott's mouth opens and closes a few times, then she puts her hand to her forehead. Both of you, get back to your duty, she sighs. Marzipan, we will talk about this later in private. You only want to talk about it in private because you know she's right. <laughs> My dads are so, so uncool, Mars complains. Mars, do your homework. Mars, you should help out more. Mars, we're going to cut off your allowance, she scoffs. As if, right? That money is mine. I earn it. With the toss of her shoulder, she seems above it all entirely. Doing what? Do you even need to ask? My presence alivens this dreary colony. I'm their beloved daughter. They owe me. Oh my goodness. Here, have a crystal. <laughs> I'm rewarding this behavior. <laughs> Alright, let's see. I think I'm gonna go through class and the depot until I uh, can relax and get energy to go outside again. You're charged with delivering a special package from Administrator Seek to Chief Engineer Instance. The wrapping is so fancy. Seek must have nanoprinted the pretty handkerchief and ribbon specifically for this patch package. You can't help but stare, but Seek snaps at you to mind your own business and get to work. Yikes, alright, touchy much? Tang laughs when she sees you in engineering holding Seek's gift. Again, she says, rolling her eyes. You try to hand her the package, but she looks at it like it's a stick of dynamite. Oh, oh no, I don't want any part of this, she insists. Just go through those doors and give it to Instance if you want to ruin everyone's day. I'm gonna open it. <laughs> you tear away the pretty wrapping to reveal a small wooden carving. It's so smooth and warm, and you can see where real tools shape the wood, not a nanoprinter. Seek must have put a lot of time and effort into it. It's clearly a carving of Instance. Her heart expression is instantly recognizable. Even if the rest of her is, uh... Naked. Yep, she is sure naked. You quickly cover it back up before someone sees you holding a naked lady doll. What if I keep it? I'm gonna keep it. Something compels you to keep the figurine, even though it has no use to you. Feels nice to steal something just for the sake of stealing it. Is it really stealing if nobody wants it? Oh no, now you're overthinking it. Ha! Then there's no crime! If nobody wants it and I steal it, then it's not stealing. Genius level! Administrator Seek tells us you've been a big help with the deliveries, your mom says, then chuckles a little bit. Well, they didn't use those words exactly. They probably were like, she's adequate. Um, let's see. I want to be governor of Vertumna. I don't actually because I'm going to let Mars do that, but this fits the best. Your parents chuckle fondly. Governor Yabby, your dad says. That has a nice ring to it. Can your first decree be taco two days? <laughs> 
Uticot has to retire someday, your mom adds. She's right. You're not sure how old Uticot is, only that she's already ancient when your parents left Earth. You think she looks at least a hundred years old. Do you have to be super old to be governor? Is that a rule? In, 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 in America, basically. Well, your mom starts to get up. I'm sure your friends all want to wish you a happy birthday. She stops and snaps her fingers. Oh, you might not have considered a career as a depot clerk, but Alan Burney mentioned their daughter Mars is working there. She needs some help. Now that people can freely order luxuries, it's pretty busy there. Oh, I will help. Sure beats shovel and dirt, your dad laughs. If you don't take that job, you tell Mars I'll be right there. Your mom rolls her eyes and smiles. Oh, oh, hey, Yabby, Mars says, breezing past you. I'm sorry, I can't talk right now. I'm on my way to work in command. She stops when you don't sound amazed enough. You know, the supply depot, she clarified. It's the most important job in the whole colony. Anything that gets made here goes through me first. Mars's smug smile, somehow even more smug. Plus, I get to the first pick of all the best stuff. Could I work there with you? Mm, well, Mars hems and haws, I suppose it is a lot of work to do alone, and I do like you. We should stick together. Whatever Mars does to pull Administrator Seek's strings works, because an hour later you get a message from them on your holopalm. They're dubious that you'll be able to rise to the responsibilities of the role, but that's nothing new. Seek is dubious about everyone and everything, but they agree Mars would be more efficient if she had someone else to keep an eye on her. I am glad for the faith that everyone has in me and Mars. Let's do something in the depot right now, so this will give us... Persuasion and Organizing. Seek rolls their eyes when they see you report to the depot for your first day as a clerk. Oh, it's you, they deadpan. Well, at least you might learn something useful while you're here. We've been working together for a year, Seek. Why are you so mean to me still? Actually, I know that you're a little sly punk behind that little face. I know that you accept bribes. You're a little snake. <laughs> the teapot is where the precious nano printer lives. Seek lords over it like a tyrant, and they don't like children. They load the depot module on your holopom and walk you through the process. People submit requisitions for the nano printer through this portal, they explain. It's your job to program the correct routine into the nano printer to fulfill their order. Then you mark it as available for delivery or pickup, depending on if we have a delivery person available. Seek grumbles. And we almost never do. With that perfunctorily explanation, Seek leaves you to figure out what to do on your own. It's okay for the first hour or so, because no one puts in a requisition at all. It is pretty early. Maybe everyone is still asleep. We're gonna organize the depot. There isn't a lot to organize, as you don't store a lot of stuff here except for the things people need all the time, like toothpaste. But you find a bucket and start to mop the floors the old-fashioned way, because there's nothing wrong with taking pride in your work. You're jerked back to reality by, oh no, I'm not, I can't, oh no. I'm gonna have to fill all these. There we go. You're about to punch in the parameters for something similar to what the requisition is when you hear someone laughing behind you. OMG, Mars explains, leaning over your shoulder to look at your hollow palm. Are you serious? Are you kidding me right now? Like, Yavi, that's not even a thing. Mars snaps her gum in your ear as she reaches over and dismisses the requisition. Here, I saved you from being a nullhead today. Now you owe me one, she says. I take payment and acts of service. She hops onto the depot counter and primly crosses her legs. I am so totally relieved to have you as my assistant here, Yabby. Finally, someone to haul boxes and fetch things so I can focus on the important work. Your assistant? I should be in charge! I don't care which one of you is in charge, Seek interrupts, so long as you get your work done. Seek pauses. Wait, did you wash the floors? They say, looking impressed. Well, that does deserve a reward. Here you go. Wow, two kudos, thanks. I can buy so much with this. They swipe their hollow palm and you feel yours pulse as a couple kudos are deposited to your account. Mars can hardly wait until Seek is gone to giggle. Either way, I'm glad you're here. This job is usually so boring. Wow, so the first thing you do when you finally get a friend to join you is try and prank me. Whatever. You know what? I think I am going to try and save my mom. We, it may take a little running around, but we should be able to do it. Especially if we stop the pixie beans. But dad can die. Oh, game don't crash. Please don't crash. No! Okay. <laughs> Aw, I gave her the flower from my mom. 
Ooh, pretty. Mars admires the Astrania. Wow, Gabby, you could have given this to anyone, but you chose me. I can't say I'm surprised, but thank you. I think you are surprised. It's a pretty big gift. Actually, I probably should have given it to Deese, considering I need to raise his friendship too. You know what? Whatever. Dare you to eat this worm. I can do that. <laughs> Ooh, the flower. Perfect. This is for you. For you. She holds the flower up to look at it. Hmm, a flower? A cheap gift, but I suppose it will look good in my hair, thank you. It's the thought that counts, Mars. Alright, let's do the talent show. Mars has been studying Deese's techniques after being embarrassed by his comedy impressions last year. Her routine this time is more like a celebrity roast. Only the celebrity target is Deese, and he's not in on the joke. She levels some truly incinerating disses about his clothes and his mannerisms and his weird hobbies, and it just it keeping it just this side of being too mean. She's a lot more polished than Deese's stammering impressions, and the judges can't help but smile. Oh. Oh no, I'm starting to see why Deese doesn't do the talent show anymore. When it's Deese's turn, he's so embarrassed that he stumbles through the whole routine. A series of knock-knock jokes that gets less funny as time drags on and ends up running off the stage before finishing. Oh, buddy. No wonder he doesn't do the talent show anymore. It's my turn? Well, I'm gonna steal Mars's thunder. I'm doing a dance routine. go. Not the most graceful win, but it worked. You perform a popular dance from Earth, complete with lip syncing. It's supposed to be done in a large, synchronized group, but the older judges recognize it and laugh with nostalgia. Your dad even knows the steps. It's a hit. You win by audience applause. Mars shrugs and shakes her hand. She wasn't really interested in winning anyway. She just wanted to get back at Deese for last year's performance. You need to stop being so mean to him. I know you regret it in the future. Oh, well. <laughs> Poor Deese. <laughs> The one thing he was doing to actually interact with other people in the colony. Come on, Mars! <laughs> Mars insisted on being the one who talks to people and takes requisitions while you work hidden in the back loading packages onto the conveyor belt. You pop a package on and it slides through the little door to the front of the room. Mars plucks it up and presents it to Professor Howell with a flourish. Thanks for brightening my day with your smile, Hal says, taking it. It's always nice to see you working hard, Marzipan. Here's a little something extra for you. He taps his hollow palm and leaves with the whistle. Wha what about me? Mars call glows and calls after him. Ten kudos. Thanks, Professor Hal. I'm going to buy so many sour sticks. It's not fair. You're the one running around in the back doing all the heavy lifting while she gets all the credit and kudos. And you want kudos because... It's just the principle of the thing. Mars sees your barely controlled anger and can't help but rub it in. What, she says in innocently, are you jealous? Ooh, I can convince her to alternate jobs, or I can convince her to split tips. Hmm, how about alternating? You swallow your anger and calm yourself. You are sick of working in the back all the time, and Mars needs to take a turn there. From now on, you're going to alternate days. It takes some convincing because Mars thinks she's better at filling out forms than carrying things, but eventually she gives in. I'm glad to see you stand up for what you want, Yabby, she tells you seriously, an arm around her sho your shoulder. You don't- you can't let the world walk all over you. Tomorrow, you can keep all the tips for yourself. Yay! That's what I like about Mars. I mean, even though she's kind of a bully to Deese right now, which sucks because I love Deese, she's also like, if you call her out, and she, re she will recognize that she's wrong. Like, that's like the nice thing about her, is that despite- her attitude and her haughtiness, she can also be like, yeah, I realize that what I'm doing is wrong, but you have to stand up for yourself, too. You have to be the one to call her out. Ooh, plus one to social cards. Ooh, Professor Howell hands you a stack of blank paper and a box of pencils and asks you to pass them out to the class. Today in humanities class, we'll be practicing our handwriting, he announces. 
You hear Tangent groan beside you. But Professor Hal, she whines, why would we ever need to write by hand when we have hollow palms? This exercise will be part history lesson, part future skill, Hal tells the class. We may not always have hollow palm technology here in our little colony. Our replicators and computers will break down eventually, and when they do, we'll have to rely on low-tech solutions for everyday tasks. So, first lesson, how to correctly hold a pencil. You and the other students get to work learning how to print by hand. It's a little bit like holding a stylus, but the texture is all wrong. Your letters are small and cramped, and you have trouble keeping them in a straight line. Tang, though, is suffering the worst. Ha! Mars laughs. Looks like we finally found something Tang isn't good at. Look, she keeps mixing up her lowercase a's and e's. Tang is used to using a stylus with her hollow palm, but she's never actually drawn letters. She fumbles like a child, bashing her fist against the hollow palm for the first time. It's painful to watch. You can tell she's getting more frustrated with each letter. Mars, on the other hand, has lovely penmanship. She can even write in cursive. My papa taught me when I was little, she says, showing off her paper. Cultured people know how to write for real. Hmm. Writing by hand is stupid anyway. Mars laughs. Sure, you two can say you were never competing, but we all know I won. She finishes copying a poem onto her piece of paper and signs it with a flourish as Tang watches enviously. <laughs> I mean, I have trouble writing on by hand, and I'm, I've done it since I was a kid, so I mean, I can't, I can't make fun of people much. My handwriting is god-awful. Ooh, Mars calls the meeting of the Secret Fun Times Club together. She declares it's time to put the secret part of SFC into effect. You're going to play spies. First of all, the adults know something about the attacks and glow that they're not telling us, Mars asserts. There's a council meeting starting soon, just down the hall. We're going to investigate. Anemone crosses her arms. Uh-uh, not gonna do it, she says. I didn't sign up for any get-in-trouble club. It's insulting to think that the adults are hiding information from us, Tang points out. If there's something dangerous out there, we should all know. Tammy wrings her hands, worried at the idea. Yeah, Cal agrees. If something is making the animals attack us, maybe we can figure it out. That way we don't have to hurt the animals. Tang rolls her eyes. I want to be a spy. <laughs> Mars nods. Okay, whoever wants to come, follow me and stay quiet. Yu, Tang, and Cal join her. Yu, Tang, and Cal and Mars creep down the hall towards the council room. It's still empty. Good. Mars pulls a small crystal object out of her pocket and shows it to you. It sort of resembles your hollow palm. She whispers, It's a 3D camera. Like the kind they use to record holovids? Yabby's going to hide it in the council room. Time to use my ninja skills! Just make sure nobody sees you, Mars says, and drops the crystal into your palm. Mars nudges you forward, then the three of them giggle and scurry back to the club room. You're on your own. Pretend to be cleaning. You grab a static mop from a panel in the wall and vigorously wipe the floor as you enter the empty council room. You work your way over to a potted antler fern and drop the crystal into the pot while pretending to dust it. Success! You casually make your way out of the room to rejoin the others. Mars beams at you. Good work, Yabby. Now- Oh! Shh! It's starting! The four of you watch the feed on your hollow palm as the council members enter the room. They start with some formalities, not all that different from how Mars starts your club meetings. Antecedent gives the first report on domestic matters. We've almost finished construction on the next phase of the living area, she says. Other than that, we're doing well. Instance gives the report from engineering. We've researched the electrical bugs the children discovered had been chewing through the wiring, she says impassively. Even in great numbers, they provide far too little energy to make them a viable alternative energy source. However, power efficiency is up across the board due to our efforts in exterminating them. Nothing to report from geophonics, your mom says, clearing her throat. We're struggling with introducing earth vegetables to vertumnin soil, but early observations look promising. Our efforts to cultivate native plants are going well. Uticot gives your mother her full endorsement. Rhett gives the report from defense. We're working on a strategy for dealing with the next Xeno attack. Utopia cuts in. On that note, there's still the matter of our scanners picking up that broadcast, but only in glow season, she says, standing up and putting her hands at the table. It has to be connected to the attack somehow. We should investigate now. Uticot shakes her head. We need everyone near the colony during glow. It's dangerous to go recklessly off into the wilderness when the animals are so agitated. I won't be responsible for endangering more colonists, Uticot continues. If something is out there during glow, I want to try and investigate it when things are more calm. Utopia slams her fist on the table. If we don't investigate soon, we'll all be in danger, she shouts. We can't keep living like this. 
Rhett also stands up and points his finger at Utopia. I'll be the one responsible for telling the families of your explorers that they didn't make it back, not you. So I'll thank you to not make decisions regarding the security of the colony. The rest of the council erupts into raised voices and angry adults. Mars turns off the stream audio, leaving them to continue arguing silently as you stare quietly at each other. I can't believe they're arguing at a time like this, Mars mutters, clenching her fist. They don't know what to do at all. They just tell us they do. She makes a noise of frustration. Utica is way out of touch with what really matters. She's, she's like a crone, and everyone else is just her cronies. Tang solemnly records your findings in the, secret, in the club's secret ledger while everyone else exchanged worried looks. You're not so sure you're happy you heard any of this. Eh, we needed to. <laughs> you're scrolling through the Hava novel behind a desk when Tangent comes in. She pauses and looks uncomfortable when she sees you and Mars looking at her and quickly disappears into the shelves. You and Mars shrug. A few minutes later, Tang comes up to the counter and drops a fistful of candy. She shifts from foot to foot as you ring her up, jostling up and down and rubbing her stomach. I also need something from behind the counter, she says quietly. Some medicine. You ask her what she needs, and she mumbles the name. You can't hear her. Can you repeat that? She mumbles again, a little louder. Mars stiffles a giggle. I'm sorry, what? Tang rolls her eyes. Stars, she curses. I need fart pills, okay? The stupid alien bacteria and all the weird native food makes my stomach upset. OMG, Mars laughs. You have blue gut? Really? Tang the Perfect has blue farts? Tang crosses her arms and looks miserable. You give Mars a questioning look. Blue gut? Mars says. You know, the stuff when you, when you keep farting and farting all this like blue dusty stuff? Mars leans over the counter to get a better look at Tang's backside. Oh no, she says dramatically. White was not the best color to wear today, Tangent. Your butt's as blue as Yabby's hair. Mars chuckles as Tang anxiously cranes her neck to look at her rear. Liar, Tang mumbles, not meeting her eyes. Just give me the pills, please. I don't want to talk about my stupid body. Alright, I'm gonna don't say a word. You jab Mars in the rib before she can make any more jokes and bring up Tang's request without another mention. You hand over the bag and Tang shoots you a grateful smile before leaving the depot, looking a little more relieved when she came in. Well, she'll definitely be relieved now. Get it? Get it? <laughs> Sorry, that was in poor taste. Alright, I'm leaving. Sorry, Mars. I want my Vricky. Damn it. Ooh, I've never helped it escape before. Seems like the right thing to do. You open a side door, then the vent, and carefully shoo the creature outside. It runs over to the outer wall, flattened its body, and burrows through a hole. At least you figure out how it got in. Maybe you'll see the little guy out in the wild someday, and it will remember what you did for it. Oh, there we go. I didn't realize that you could set it free. I'm kind of glad I did that. I mean, I already have the hot buy, and last time we got all the four pets, so it's not like we need them anyway. It's always interesting to check out new things. Ooh, and we got a new perk. Extra card draw, baby. All right, well, we've reached the end of another year, and we got a lot of stuff done. We learned more about the adults and what they're doing, and we also saw more of Mars's leadership side and, unfortunately, more of her bullying side. But we know that eventually that'll mellow out, hopefully sooner than later. Next time, we're probably going to learn more about the famine, which is unfortunately still going to happen because I didn't stop the ship. But we'll take care of it. We'll try and save our mom, but our dad is toast, like I said. We're not saving both of them for a while. Um... But other than that, I will say thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, please consider subscribing. Remember to take care of yourself, work hard in the depot, and have a good day.